Okay, buddy, welcome back. So last time was continuous motion, this time is erratic motion. And in all honesty, this is just all about graphs. Like seriously, if you have a graph, you can use that to solve all the kinds of problems we're gonna go through. So before, we had things that were moving in nice straight lines, or at least things that had the same equation the entire time. And so now we have to learn how to deal with it if that were to change at some point. So at some point in time, the equation that's controlling your velocity, your acceleration, your position changes. It's no longer the same. But it's all just about using graphs. And I can sum it up for you really quickly, but let's actually go along with the PowerPoint as it's set up. So why do we care about this? Well, because you might have data that looks like this. You might actually have um, velocity or position or acceleration data that is not an equation. Like if I get rid of this equation, how am I going to solve it? But in all honesty, using the principles we're going to develop in this section, you can solve for the acceleration or the position using just this data right here, even if you don't know the underlying equation. And there are a lot of times where this can be very, very helpful. So we're going to see things like this. We're going to figure out how to solve it. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how this works. So you know that an integral is just a fancy way of saying area, right? And you know that a derivative is just a fancy way of saying slope. Because there are just areas and slopes, guess what happens if you take the area or slope of a line on one of these graphs? Well, if I take the area, like for right here, just up to five seconds, I know what the area of a triangle is. As a note, I could actually integrate if it has set form, but for this one, I just see that it's a triangle. I can use a triangle. And so I know the area of a triangle. Okay, that's a triangle. That's 20 high, 5 base. 1 half base times height is 1 half 5 times 20 is equal to 50. So how far did this go in the first 5 seconds? It went 50 meters. If I wanted to find the acceleration, I need to take the slope. That's not too bad. Slope is just simply equal to rise over run. So I rise 20, okay. I run five. The acceleration that first five seconds is equal to four meters per second squared. That is it, that is everything for this entire section. It's simply that if you need an integral, you can just take an area. If you need a derivative, you can just take a slope for that particular section or for the entirety if you need to and get your answer. That is what erratic motion is about. Now here, I'll go back a little bit. So for this guy, I had a set equation for this first part. I can integrate this guy or take derivatives as I need to to get how far it's traveling this time. This was not too, too nice to see the velocity as a function of position. So that's why we have the whole a ds is equal to v dv thing. I can actually rearrange this if I need to to get the answers I want. Um, but here's where it comes in handy because this box right here doesn't have a set equation. However, I know my velocity is constantly at 75. And so I can use this to figure out what the area is and solve for different things. So all of these are helpful for us. All of these are helpful for figuring out how fast I'm going, where I'm going, just using a graph. Because a lot of times you're given data that's um, discrete. It's a bunch of dots. It's not just a set equation. Okay, let's get back through this. We'll just run through some of this. I already mentioned this, so we're going to skip it. The ST graph we mentioned already. VT graph, super easy. AT graph, also the same. AS graph. Here's the one where it gets weird. Okay, so the AS graph is one of those ones where it's a little bit more crazy because you have acceleration as a function of position. And in this case, you're using this equation right here. Okay, this equation right here. So what you're getting when you take an area from an AS graph, acceleration and position, is the difference between the velocity squared. Technically one half of the distance between the velocities squared. So it's still helpful, especially if you know what your initial velocity is. It's just not quite as straightforward as a velocity versus time graph or a position versus time graph or as an acceleration versus time graph. And the last one we're going to talk about is the VS graph. So... And this one, taking the area doesn't really give me anything, 
but the slope is valuable because I had that whole ADS is equal to V dV equation. If I divide both sides by DS, this cancels. I have acceleration is equal to this guy right here. So what I can find by taking the slope and then multiplying it by the velocity at that point is my acceleration. That's the key to a V estrograph. It's all about finding acceleration um, at a particular position. So acceleration at a particular position. So that's it. These are not hard to do. Now, in all honesty, the best way to see how they're used is just to do some examples. We won't use graphs terribly much. However, in real life, you use graphs a lot because your data is discrete and you have to figure out how to deal with it and use it to get the information you need. Cool? I think, yes, we have an example next time. So I'll see you all then. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.